Japan has worked very much for this moment where the country can bring about this change. And uh, we are also at a, a period when there are a great attempts to try to undo this. And in, in particular, for instance, what happened the last few days, attempt to try to continue to verify, demonize those who re represent change, the Berse, uh, the leaders, Pak Samad, uh, Ambiga, in particular Ambiga, in Parliament saying that he should be hanged, <laughs> apart from other uh, 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 unrepeatable uh, uh, terms and phrases, the Pakatan Rakyat leaders, civil society, uh, activists and uh, trying to to play the race card the card of fear and i'm reminded of uh, going through one of the pieces by janadas uh, as to what happened in 1969 because they have spent the time to try to 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 distort what happened in 1969 there are times to try to say that i was caught that i was, i cost me 13 for instance not only I cost me 13, even Lim Guan Eng cost me 13. <laughs> and Lim Guan Eng at that time was only 8 years old. Uh, how an 8 year old can cost me 13, I don't know. And uh, Pan Yu Teng would be a great eyewitness if to, to be with us, to stand up loud and clear to tell Malaysians what happened in 1969. And, and uh, the, the DAP had no role whatsoever. I mean, in my case, I was accused of, uh, of being in the, been taking part in the victory processions of uh, May the 11, 12, 13, when I was never in Kuala Lumpur. And despite my clarification, there are those cyber troopers who keep uh, plugging the issue, asking me to say where I was on May the 11. Well, they should tell me where I was on May the 11, 1969. I was contesting in Malacca and uh, May 11, as you know, is uh, May the 10th of the general elections, the polling. And in those days, counting went on. Uh, it, it, it's not the separate counting at present. You get all the ballot boxes to one counting centre, open up all the block boxes, a mountain of votes it would be. And it, it took eight, ten hours for the counting process to be completed. And normally, we would not know the result until about three, four, five early hours in the morning. And it will be the 11th of May. And by that time, we have completed the whole uh, process, including the cel celebratory part of it, going for final breakfast. It will be already well in the morning. And as you know, I was in staying in PJ, Kwaning, eight years old, with uh, the, uh, 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 three other siblings of my wife. They were in uh, Paramount Garden. So I came back very tired, must have just collapsed that day on the 12th, on the, on, on the 11th. Because on the 12th morning, on the 12th, on Monday, I went by to Malacca. And I think I was the only member of parliament who had a victory procession, peaceful, no trouble. We had a victory uh, public rally at the Bandahilia Padang, now no more. And also no problem, because on the 10th morning, I was flying to Kota Kinabalu, where we were going to help and campaign for the independent candidates. Because in Sabah, voting was we staggered for two weeks after May the 10th, so we could still campaign in the in some areas. So I was nowhere around in the in the in KL, but there was a time to try to to to, to rewrite history. And the uh, final thing would have been a, would be a very very proper person to come forward to rebut and to tell the truth. And in the article by Janada, uh, Janadas Devon, I, uh, I see that he was also for a period with Devon in uh, Singapore. And he will be able also to, be, to, to bear uh, uh, witness, personal testimony of that period. That when, that, uh, when I was in Sabah, I was thrown out of Sabah, I was uh, ejected from Sabah. At that time, Tu Mustafa was the, sub, was the chief minister, had two grooming executive jets, which was a great luxury at that time. You had Turkish bath in the grooming jet. And of course, 
it was a subject of my criticism in public rallies. And that was the 13th night. 14th morning, I was uh, visited by a troop of uh, immigration officers who served me with the order of uh, uh, expulsion that I had to leave by, the, at that time, the next available flight was about 2 or 3 p.m. And being uh, the uh, 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 recalcitrant person that I was at the time, I deliberately uh, missed the plane by going around Kolkata Kinabalu, visiting shop by shop. It was supposed to be a 3, three o'clock flight, I arrived late. And it was fortunate that I would arrive late because otherwise I wouldn't be here. Because there was a, a, a posse of a bunch of horsemen who went to the airport to try to finish me off. Because their idol was too Mustafa at that time. And they felt that I had the, uh, uh, the defamed the, their chief. And they wanted to finish me off. And fortunately, I missed the plane. And, I, I, and uh, I'm still around. <laughs> And on that day, on the 14th of, uh, of May, there was no other, no other flight, so I was uh, uh, allowed to stay for another night. Uh, so that I had to leave the next day on the 15th. And just before the departure time, the police took me into custody, just to be sure that I wouldn't miss the plane again. <laughs> the, the protective custody, so that the, they escorted me uh, to the airport and uh, to, left, to, to leave uh, 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 punctually. That's the 15th of uh, May. At that time, there was curfew in Subang. The MAS, there was no uh, flights to Subang. Flights have not, have not been resumed, have not resumed. And uh, I think David was in contact with me and I stopped over in Singapore and I spent two nights in Singapore keeping in touch with our comrades, with Fan Yuteng, with uh, Dr. Chen with uh, our party leaders, and they said they don't come back because you're on the blacklist. They're waiting for you, you come back, you'll be arrested. I said, how can I don't come back? Just got, I just got elected, the people uh, has voted you as the, as, uh, to be the representative, you have to come back. And I said to my family, of course, my family said the same thing. My wife said, don't come back, please. <laughs> Stay away. But I, and Devon also have tried to persuade me not to go back. But I told them that, uh, I didn't tell my wife, of course, I told the other comrades, party leaders, <laughs> that I had to come back. You cannot run away when the, when the country is in the, the people are in trouble. You had to come back to be with the people. So on the, on the 17, I spent two nights, I think, in Singapore with the Devon. On the 17, I took a, a, a taxi to Goodwood, Good Park, Good Park Hotel, had a press conference where I publicly announced that uh, I was coming back and I offered cooperation with Tunku Abdul Rahman and the government to help to restore uh, order and reconciliation in the country. And uh, went to uh, Palibar Airport, I think, uh, to take the flight. And they even made the arrangement to fly to Ipoh, from Singapore to Subang to Ipoh. And Sin Vasagam was supposed to wait for me and, and our DAP members of parliament to wait for me in Ipoh. In case I don't show up, then they know that I've been arrested. Because there's a, if I'm going to be arrested, it is most likely that I'll be taken in in Subang. So in that one hour flight from Singapore to, Singapore to uh, Subang, I tried to write a note to my wife. Before that, I told my wife, I'm not coming back, don't worry. Yeah. I, she, she never expected me to come back. I said, I'm not coming back, I'm staying put for a few days. Then I took the flight to, to the airport to take a, to take a plane back. And, and, you know, in the old days, you have this, uh, at the back of the seat in front of you, you get the postcards. So I, can, I scribble a note to my wife, I say, if, I, if you don't meet again, please understand. I have, I have, I have not seen that note. Maybe when we capture Putrajaya, we open up the special, special branch <laughs> files in, maybe there. But I think it'll be, it will be very, very significant and sentimental. And at that time, when I arrived in the Subang, we had, you had to disembark. All had to disembark because of passport the clearance. So all uh, queue up at the tarmac, near up, uh, off the tarmac. And there were two uh, immigration officers surrounded by three policemen. Everybody went up uh, to check their passport. When it came to me, I went up, suddenly I, 
I just blurted out, are you waiting for me? They look at me, look at my passport and took me away. <laughs> and uh, in the car from uh, airport down to Jalabanda police station, at that time was curfew. You see uh, overturned cars, burnt cars. And the thought that struck me was if they take me out somewhere and just finish, finish me off, nobody would know. Luckily, it didn't happen. Be that as me, so that was, that was what happened during that period. And I started my first ISA detention. And there was a time when the Fan Yu Ting had to take over uh, running of the party. In particular, a few months later when uh, Goh Ho Kwan uh, resigned and uh, I was appointed as a Secretary sec General, but I was in detention. But what, was, what I think I want to point out here is this, uh, the latest uh, the talk that I was supposed to be responsible for May 13. I still remember that when I was in the detention, I wrote a letter to Dunga Abdurrahman, who was then the Prime Minister. And that was, I think, August the 5th. I wrote him a letter when I gave my views, my concerns about the country. And I, offering uh, the DAP's help to help to bring about uh, reconciliation, unity. And I stressed the importance of having a Royal Commission inquiry to find out what went wrong who caused May 13. And there was not, not only in that letter to the Prime Minister, the, in my first press conference when it was released on October the 1st, 1970, I made the call also for a Royal Commission inquiry. And I repeated the call for a Royal Commission inquiry in my first speech in Parliament when there was this amendment to the Constitution in February uh, 1971. I mentioned all this to show that if we uh, have done anything which is uh, reprehensible, which is something for, for uh, uh, that calls for action to be taken. I would not have dared to make such calls. And in any event, I'm sure I would have been hauled up long, long ago. And not now, 40, 43 years later. And I'm sure nobody knew what happened at that time. So they can now can try to uh, demonize, could try to completely uh, distort what happened. I think this is a time when the funny thing could be around, he will be able to help to clear the air. Not only that, but also I'm sure he will be able to speak loud and clear as to the hopes of Malaysians for change, for which he has de de dedicated his life for four decades.